interactive, even though it's like a graphic novel, is that weird? Hello friends, my name is Claire and today I will be doing my January wrap up and my February TBR. This is the very first year that I've ever used a spreadsheet book tracker and life changing. I am so excited about it having pie charts to tell me my reading. like. Stunning. I do not typically do wrap-up videos and I never do monthly TBRs. I sometimes do seasonal TBRs because I am such a mood reader that I just pick up whatever I feel like picking up. However, there are so many books that I want to get through in the next few months and there are so many read-alongs happening that I want to participate in and I feel like the only way for me to achieve all of this is to actually give myself a schedule. Will I actually read them all? Unlikely. I had a fairly successful reading month. I hit a slump about midway through, but before that point, I was feeling pretty good. In the month of January, I read 13 books, which is highly unusual for me. So we're going to break it down and see how I actually accomplished that. <laughs> I've said it before, I will say it a million times more, I am a pretty slow reader. I fully absorb every single word, sometimes multiple times. So it takes me a while to get through a book. That's why I find I'm very picky about the books I do read. So this past month I read five graphic novels, which is something I've only started recently picking up. I listened to three audiobooks and I only read five physical full-length novels, which actually is pretty usual for me. I am still very proud of these statistics. I don't have like any fancy bullet journal spreads to track my reading. I wish I was someone who was capable of that. So instead I just have this little tracker here with all the books I read, the rating I gave them. My camera really said no. The first book that I picked up this year, I feel like it was the right tone to start off 2021. Check please, the graphic novel. The first book, hashtag hockey. It was easily a five star read. Later in the month, I also picked up Check Please 2, Sticks and Scones, and more than five stars if possible. I just came to love these characters so much. I've never cared about hockey before. I know, blasphemy, I'm Canadian, but I just, <laughs> now I want a hockey boyfriend. Preferably Jack Zimmerman. I fell in love when I think about Jack Zimmerman. <laughs> Definitely a new book boyfriend. Off of NetGalley, I received an e-arc of Athena, Goddess of Wisdom and War. Did I request a graphic novel because I wanted to get my score up? Maybe. Did I enjoy this novel nevertheless? Yes. This graphic novel covers several of the Greek mythology stories surrounding the goddess Athena. It definitely was a more modern and feminist take on the goddess. It was interesting after having read Lore and then reading this book, it was two very different takes on Athena. But I have been on a bit of a Greek mythology kick recently thanks to Percy Jackson. So it was really fun to get more information about some of the stories I've heard about but actually reading about the stories and how it all came to be was really interesting. I gave that book four stars. Another graphic novel I picked up was Paper Girls volume three. I gave this book 3.5 stars. I'm still not entirely sure how I feel about Paper Girls but I will continue to read them because I'm curious. I don't really know what's going on. The final graphic novel that I picked up this month was Fangirl Volume 1. I gave this book 4.5 stars. It just was not a five star book in general, but I loved it and enjoyed it. Fangirl is my favorite book and I was looking forward to getting to read this, but it is of course someone else's interpretation of the story. As I was reading this book, I realized, oh, I really do know every single line from Fangirl, <laughs> like all the dialogue. I was like, oh, I know what's coming next. I know what they're gonna say. Sometimes they took some of the swear words out, but they left them in other places. First I thought it was censoring family-friendly content and now I don't really know why they did that, but I noticed the difference it felt very off to me when a sentence was slightly changed. I think another thing about this is even when I was 16 in high school and I was suddenly the age of all these young adult protagonists that I grew up reading about, that was weird, Kath was still older than me. She was someone who was in college and then when I was in college I was like brain not computing Kath will forever be older than me. But you look at these pictures, she's a child. She's a little baby. I'm so old now. Oh no. The pictures all worked with the story but it was weird to see Kath so young and also like I never imagined the height difference with her and Levi because in my head I was Kath okay I totally self-inserted I was Kath 
I was like, that's me. So I was like, what do you mean she's not tall? Kath has bangs, should I get bangs? I was honestly debating getting bangs while reading this because I was like, I can do this look. This could be me. Anyway, that was off topic. It was a good time. I'm very much looking forward to volume two. An audiobook that I listened to this month was Happily Ever Afters by Elise Bryant. I found that I wasn't always completely engaged in the story and the plot. However, for a high school based young adult, it was cute. And I think if you're looking to pick up a cute contemporary book, this should be the one because it had a lot of representation. And just the way it's written, it honestly, it felt like a love letter to young adults adult contemporaries they talk about Sarah Dessen and Christina Lauren and like as a teenage girl wanting to be able to write your own love story because you read all those books. Midway through I thought it was going to be a 3.5 but near the end I ended up bumping it up to a 4 because it was just so dang cute. The second book that I listened to in January was Daisy Jones and the Six. Y'all know you've heard so many people tell you that you need to listen to the audiobook of Daisy Jones and the Six. And I'm just another one of those voices in the void telling you to do it. The final audiobook I listened to this month was I'm Still Here, Black Dignity in a World Made for Whiteness by Austin Channing Brown. The audiobook is narrated by Austin Channing Brown and it was so insightful and educational and I cannot recommend listening to it enough. I gave this one five stars. The next book was The Twelve Dates of Christmas by Jenny Bayless. For full thoughts, Em and I both did a Twelve Days of Christmas readathon wrap-up video. I gave this book three stars. The next book I actually received an arc of through NetGalley and that was Lore by Alexandra Bracken. I gave this book 4.5 stars. Wait, I have a copy here. I didn't remember that I'd already ordered it from the library and it showed up a couple of weeks after I'd already read it, but like having it in my hands just makes me so happy. I have like a fleshed out review of it on my Goodreads, so feel free to check that out. It's a modern day Greek mythology, not retelling, it's not a retelling. There's basically a hunt that happens every seven years where you're hunting down the gods. I continue to not be able to give book synopsis, just check it out because it's really good. I forgot how much I love Alexandra Bracken's writing. I haven't read any of her books since I was in high school, but I loved her stuff back in the day and I'm so grateful to have some new content from her and I'm really looking forward to getting more in the future because it was such a step up from her usual YA. Not to talk poorly about younger young adult because it's a beautiful genre and I love it, but it definitely bordered on the more dark and mature side of young adults. It covered topics that you don't typically see in young adult fantasy novels and it handled them in a very raw but real way and I honestly wish that I had had this book in high school because I think Lore, the protagonist, is a character that I needed to see when I was younger. I needed to see a young girl who has just been beaten down and who's been through real life trauma, not your fantasy setting trauma, and who hasn't overcome that, who is still fighting externally as much as internally against that. Be sure to look up trigger warnings before going into this book. I have a list of the trigger warnings in my Goodreads review as well. I do think it's important to just be mentally prepared for some of the topics that come up in this book, but I highly recommend reading it. I enjoyed it so much. The character relationships and friendships were so good. I forgot how much I love Alexandra Bracken's banter. Within like a few chapters, I was like, oh yeah, I love this. And of course this month we started the Grisha verse read along. In the month of January we read Shadow and Bone and Siege and Storm. We actually just finished this one so we're moving on to the third and final book in the Grisha trilogy. I gave Shadow and Bone and Siege and Storm four stars. I think they're fun, enjoyable young adult fantasy reads but so far they don't seem to be anything particularly special. I am very excited to continue reading on in this world and to get to some of the other books because I've heard wonderful things about the Six of Crows duology in particular. That is coming up next month. The final book that I read this month and I'm so proud of myself for picking it up, Anxious People by Frederick Bachman. 
As you can tell, I'm actually still reading it, but while I'm recording this, it's still January and I only have about 60 pages left, so I'm going to finish it tonight. Unless something weird happens at the end of the book and I decide I hate it, easily a five-star read. Oh my gosh, Frederick Bachman's mind. I can't. I feel like it's weird for me to go into depth talking about it when I actually haven't completed the book. However, I will say compared to Bear Town, it's a different vibe while still being like Frederick Bachman's writing style. Everything he writes about is just such a great depiction of humanity. Bear Town was a more stressful read. Even though the book is described as a hostage drama, it actually has a lot of humor. It just reads in such a hopeful way. Whereas Bear Town, I don't want to say is more dramatic because I feel like the word dramatic is dismissive and this book should not be dismissed. But it definitely had more constant tension that left me on edge. Whereas this book, I also want to keep reading because I want to know what's going on because I'm excited to find out instead of dreading the next page but also like unable to stop if that makes sense. Once again, I haven't finished the book so I don't know for sure, but I do think Beartown had a bigger personal impact on me, but I am still in love with anxious people and I'm so glad I finally read it. Okay, now we will be talking about the books I'm hoping to get to in February. First up, we have Accidentally Engaged by Farah Heron. This book comes out in March, and I currently have an arc of it on NetGalley, which I really need to get to before the book comes out. Accidentally Engaged is the sequel to The Chai Factor, which is an adult contemporary romance. It stole my heart when I read it over the summer. I'm so excited to get to read the sequel. The sequel actually follows the main protagonist from The Chai Factor's best friend, I honestly don't know much about this book except that it looks like it's an enemies to lovers romance so we're here for it. The next book that I actually am surprised I haven't gotten to in the last few months is Fangirl, the physical full novel. I typically read this every December, sometimes January, and one time February so I guess soon it's gonna be two times February if I get to it. I feel like I'm not prioritizing this book this year because there are so many new stories that I really want to get to, but this book does bring me so much comfort and I've read it for like the past seven years without missing a year. We'll see if I get to it. Going off of Fangirl, I'm also planning on reading for the first time The Outsiders. I know, I know every single person on the planet has read The Outsiders except for me and I feel left out and I plan on fixing that, but in Fangirl they read The Outsiders. So like, I kind of want to read The Outsiders and then Fangirl or like vice versa, but I gotta like tie it in together because every year I read Fangirl and I'm like, oh yeah, I should pick up The Outsiders. Still haven't done that. 2021 is the year I will read The Outsiders. I'm also planning on reading volume four, five, and six of The Paper Girls. Once again, I, I don't really know how I feel about these books, but they, um, they're um they quick reads and people love them. Another book that I'm not really prioritizing this month, but that I would like to eventually get to is the Love Curse of Melody McIntyre. I do have it from the library, so I do need to read it kind of quickly. I might be including this book in a secret TBR, so... Stay tuned for that. I just want to be an important person who says I have a secret TBR, to be quite honest. For new releases coming out in February, we of course have Sarah J Mass's A Court of Silver Flames. I will be picking it up at the bookstore the day it comes out. I'm a little nervous, I'm not gonna lie. Usually Sarah J Mass would be like my most anticipated read of the year, but but that one goes to Chain of Gold coming out in March. Little did I know when I made my February reading schedule, Chain of Gold comes out March 3rd, the beginning of March. I assumed mid-March, which means I have to squeeze a reread of Chain of Gold into February somehow. I don't know if I can do it. I don't know if I will accomplish it. I don't have to reread Chain of Gold, but I loved this book and I want to. <laughs> and like Chain of Iron is my most anticipated read of the entire year. I don't want to wait to read it. As you already know, because I already shamelessly promoted it in this video, I am one of the hosts of the Grishaverse Read Along. This month we will be reading Ruin and Rising, and I have the pretty cover for this one. I walked into the library myself and picked it up because I was not going to get stuck with another cover that looked like this. You would not catch me doing it. This is a beautiful cover. Okay. Stunning. <gasps> I just <laughs> understood why the new covers have what they have. <laughs> In 
in my defense, I understood the first one. I understood the stag for Shadow and Bone, and I didn't have the cover for Siege and Storm. So like, I knew it was like the serpent, and I was kind of like, why is there a snake on that cover? But I wasn't seeing it while I was reading the book. It only just clicked. Oh, <sighs> embarrassing for me. Okay. And of course we will be starting the Six of Crows duology. I am so excited. These are highly anticipated reads for me. I'm so ready to get to that duology. And the final book I'll be picking up for a read-along that I'm not hosting but I'm really hoping I will be able to participate in. Scythe by Neil Schusterman. The Scythe read-along is being hosted by some of my lovely friends. All the info will be below. They are reading one book a month. So easy. Unless your TBR is not physically possible for you as a slow reader. But I do really want to read these books and I love participating in read-alongs, so I'm hoping I'll be able to get to it. If I don't read Scythe this month, I'll read it next month with Thunderhead. Hi, it's Claire from the future. I've finished recording, I already have one earring out. But I forgot to mention that I am also currently listening to the audiobook of The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. I just started listening to it today, so also on the February TBR. Also, I just downloaded the video and I realized, um, one of my eyes, it's like smudged. So, um, sorry if it's annoyed you the whole video. And if you didn't notice, wow, it's nice of you to not notice that. I appreciate it and now you're gonna notice it, so <laughs> sorry. All right, that is it. That is my January wrap up, my February TBR. If you've made it to the end of the video, you're a real one. I don't know how you just sat through all of that rambling, but I appreciate it and I appreciate you and thank you. Will I do a February wrap up and a March TBR? Probably not because this was unnecessarily long and it was just me rambling a lot, but I read so many books that I enjoyed this month that I really did want to share. So we'll see. If you want to see more wrap ups and TBR videos, let me know in the comments below. If you're like, stick to your usual content, happily. Here's to hoping I actually achieve my TBR, which I've like never done before, so we'll see. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.